Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Check it out at carsandbids.com. This is the 2023 Hyundai Palisade, and it's one of the best family SUVs on the market. That's been proven by sales figures as this has been a smash hit since it first came out about three years ago. The Palisade has now been updated for the 2023 model year, and today I'm going to review the latest Palisade and show you all of its quirks and features. All right, time for the quirks and features of the updated 2023 Hyundai Palisade. I'm going to start with a little overview. This is a midsize family SUV on the larger end of midsize, intended to compete with the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the Ford Explorer, the Toyota Highlander, the Honda Pilot, vehicles like that. Now, under the skin, the Palisade is also mechanically identical to the Kia Telluride, which has also been updated slightly for the 2023 model year. So if you're thinking Palisade, you should also consider the Telluride since they're basically the same vehicle under the skin. Now the Palisade and the Telluride have both been considered top contenders among midsize SUVs since they were launched for the 2020 model year. I first reviewed the Palisade about four years ago and I loved it. It was great then and now it's been updated with some improvements. As for the quirks and features, let's talk 2000. 2023 updates first, the most obvious being the grill, which is larger and uh, more square than before. Big, aggressive grill, which is becoming the trend in the car world, and the Palisade moves more towards it. You also have some more squared off design elements, specifically the running lights up front. The housing is more squared off, I guess, to give a more aggressive, muscly appearance. And it's the same deal in the back. This section below the bumper has been redesigned with a more square, kind of visually wide and aggressive look that's intended to help make the Palisade seem, I guess, more brawny. As for exterior quirks, there are a few worth noting. We'll start with lighting, which is a big one. The headlights are not where you'd expect. You'd think they'd be here, but they aren't. That looks like a piece of grill. Instead, the headlights are down here, lower than you'd expect, sort of in the middle of the bumper, which is unusual and a little unorthodox. Maybe even stranger, that upper piece that looks like grill, that's actually the turn signal. You can see it does come on, even though it looks like it matches the grill design it's a hidden turn signal. And there's still one more notable light quirk up front. The running light is this light pipe that looks like it's sticking through the bumper. Of course, it's not. They're separate sections of light, but it does give that impression, like this big pipe of light. It's a cool front end lighting design with some unusual touches. As for exterior design, this Palisade looks great. The Palisade has always been an attractive SUV since it came out three, four years ago. Good proportions, looks nice, no weird angles or strange styling decisions. It's an attractive, well-designed, well-proportioned SUV. And this one is especially nice looking, but it should be. It's the top trim Palisade calligraphy model with nice chrome accents and upscale wheels. Deals. This one starts around $51,000 for this top trim level. The lesser Palisades don't look quite as nice, but they're a lot cheaper. Base model starts around $37,200, so it's a big jump to go to the calligraphy. Now, new for 23, there is a new trim level this year. It's called the Palisade XRT, and it's this blacked out, sporty, like aggressive looking Palisade. It's intended to be cooler, I guess but the calligraphy is still the top of the line. It has all the great features, including this one. I have the key fob in my hand. I'm obviously not in the car. I've just started the car, and now I will drive the car. Goodbye, Palisade. I can control it using the key fob. 
<laughs> See you later. That is a feature of the calligraphy in this car in general. It offers these buttons on the key fob, which allow you to move it forward or backwards once you remote start it. I guess the theory is you're in a tight parking spot. You can't climb inside. You can move it out of the spot with the key fob so you don't have to squeeze your way in, and then you can get in where it's easier. I'm not sure if anyone will ever actually use this feature, but it's there. Interestingly, despite having that feature, one key related disappointment they left off this car is there's no keyless access for the rear doors. You walk up to the car with the key in your pocket, you pull on the door handle and it recognizes the key and unlocks. You never have to take the key out of your pocket, but that only works in front. In back, you actually have to walk up and unlock the door with the key fob to open it up, which is annoying if you're carrying a small child, you're going to load into a car seat or some larger item you want to load into the car. It's a weird oversight and a little disappointing. <laughs> you can remote control drive the car from the key fob, but you can't just walk up and open the door. But anyway, next we move inside the updated Palisade. And once again, I'm going to start with the changes for 2023. A big one is the new steering wheel. The outgoing Palisade model, the steering wheel wasn't very high class or high quality, which especially didn't work on these higher trim levels. Now we got a new one, which definitely looks nicer and looks more luxurious like you might expect. It's another update for 23. The gauge cluster has been improved. It's a full screen. It was before, but now it's higher resolution, so it looks better and so you can see it better. We've also had some changes in the dashboard area. It's been restyled to make it look like there's a climate vent that goes the entire way across. More and more automakers are adopting this design instead of having individual climate vents that break up the dashboard, just one clean one. Of course, it's not actually one giant climate vent. Most of this in the passenger side is fake and it's there for style, but it does clean up the look of the interior a bit. There's also a few new features for the 23 model year, specifically a Wi-Fi hotspot now available in this car. You also have heated third row seats, which this particular model does have, very nice and luxurious, and a massaging driver seat, although the implementation isn't that great. There's a little button on the side of the seat, you press it, but then there's nothing to tell you what setting it's on or whether it's even on or off, except you feel it in your butt and your back. I wish there was something you could control it with in the infotainment screen, but I'll take a massaging seat to no massaging seat even if it doesn't work all that well. But anyway, on to the quirks and features in here. One big one is the gear selector situation, which is buttons. You can see P, R, N, D. There's no dial, there's no lever. You just push the gear you want. One thing I find funny, when you're in park and you press drive, it actually goes through reverse and neutral. You can see them briefly light up, and same deal when you go the other way. Just like if you were shifting down a gear pattern into gear, it actually goes through all the gears rather than just popping between the two. Now, also in this area, you have your climate controls, which is split between some physical buttons and dials and a screen. This implementation works just fine, very easy to use, very simple, very intuitive, great climate controls. And below all these controls here in the center, you also have buttons for your heated seat, heated steering wheel, and cooled seat, physical buttons, so you don't have to go into the infotainment screen into some menu to turn that stuff on. Also notable here, you have a dial that you can turn to adjust your drive mode, sport, comfort, eco surprising amount but the most surprising thing is in the center you have a differential lock which you wouldn't really expect in a Hyundai crossover that's usually a big serious off-roader feature this only works at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour but below 25 it does lock all four wheels turning in case you're in some slippery situation another notable button in here is this one with a P and a camera you press that and it instantly turns on your parking camera so if you're in some tight spot but you haven't reversed, which will automatically bring up the camera, you can push that button and then see without going into some menu. It's nice to have easy camera access right there. Next up, moving further down in the center console, one drawback is this big pad in the center. It's actually a lid. You can push it open and then you have cup holders there, a wireless charging pad, some charge ports, some storage. But when it's closed, it's not particularly attractive, just kind of an ugly plastic lid staring up at you. In the calligraphy model, you'd think they'd put some nicer trim on that or something similar. 
Now, if you want even more storage, the center console armrest, of course, that lifts up to reveal a pretty large storage area. And below this whole center console, there's another tier of center console where you can stick even more stuff to store it, which adds even more practicality to this interior. Also worth pointing out in the center, another thing I like is the rear view mirror camera. You can see right now it's a rear view mirror, but if you flip this switch, it becomes a camera and shows behind you, which is really nice if you have the car are full of stuff, strollers, car seats, you packed it to go somewhere, you don't have your visibility blocked because the camera is behind all that and you see perfectly out the back. I hope every car implements this feature soon. I also like the sunroof situation in this Palisade. You don't have some giant panoramic glass roof over the whole interior, but you have something that some would consider even better. Dual sunroofs, front and rear. The rear you can open the sunshade and the sunroof is open. The front you can open the shade or the actual sunroof to get air going through here, which is nice to see. Most cars with full panoramic roofs, you can't actually open the glass for airflow. They're just there to look out of and add light. So it's nice here, you do have dual sunroofs and one of them actually opens, which is becoming unusual. Next up, we move on to the infotainment system in the new Palisade, which is generally great. Excellent, easy to use, responsive, except I hate the home screen. You have this weird esoteric home screen that's supposed to be giving you like a map and some other info, but it mostly doesn't show anything. You have to swipe over to get to all your apps, and from there, you can open stuff to get any real information. But I love the fact that when you do, you get a dual screen display. So I got the radio on one side, the navigation on the other. I can switch the radio stations without having to leave the map. And I can scroll through various other displays on that right panel to show all sorts of different information. It's really well implemented. And there's some just generally cool and quirky features in here. For instance, quiet mode. You turn that on and the rear speakers all mute. So you only get music playing up here. The thinking is you're driving on a long trip, your kids have fallen asleep in back, you want to listen to music, you don't want to wake them up, you turn on quiet mode. It's a cool idea. This car also has a microphone that will broadcast your voice to the rear seats through the speakers. So you're sitting up front, you want to tell your kids to stop fighting, you can say it calmly so you don't have to turn around and yell at them, but your voice will carry through loudly through the speakers, which is cool. And then there's sounds of nature. In your car, you've got a radio, maybe media player. In this, there are built-in nature sounds that you can listen to. If you don't want to hear music or a podcast, take a listen. the sounds of nature. <laughs> Anyway, next, moving on to the other screen in here, which is the gauge cluster. There's some benefits and drawbacks to this. The biggest drawback is, even though it's a screen, and even though it was improved for 23 with better resolution, it doesn't show all that much. You can't get like a full screen map in here. You can't get even your music to show up when you're playing it. It doesn't really give you that much configurability, which is certainly a disappointment. Now, with that said, you do have blind spot cameras here. So you're driving along, you put on your turn signal and a camera pops up to show you if there's a car in your blind spot. It works on both sides, left or right. Every time your signal goes on, that camera goes on. I love it and I wish more cars had that. The gauge cluster also changes its look as you change drive modes. For instance, you're looking at normal mode but flip into sport and it gets more aggressive and more fun. Now, directly in front of that gauge cluster, you have the new steering wheel, which like I already mentioned is a big improvement in terms of its look and its feel. Over on the right spoke, you have all the controls controls for driver assist, which in this car work fantastically. So adaptive cruise control, speeding up and slowing down based on the car ahead of you works great. It also will automatically steer on highways around long bends. You can let the car do the work and it does it fantastically. The Palisade will also automatically lane change for you. If you're driving along on the freeway, you got an empty lane, put on your turn signal and it'll shift over. Although it's worth pointing out that the lane change requires a little more babysitting. You have to have your hand on the wheel. You you don't have to do the movement to change lanes, but you got to at least be resting your hand there so the car knows you're paying attention. Overall, this is a great driver assist system and a real benefit to the Palisade. And as for the interior in general, it's worth pointing out, very nice in here. Like I said, this is the top trim level calligraphy model and beautiful leather seats feel very comfortable and 
supple, nice materials everywhere, aluminum, good pinstriping, everything looks good in here. There's a few little changes that I would make for a top trim level model. A couple of things look a little cheaper than I'd like, but mostly it is very luxurious, very attractive in here, like you'd expect from a near luxury SUV and not like you'd probably expect from a Hyundai. Pretty nice interior. But anyway, next we move on to the back seats, the second row, where there's a lot to like back here. You'll notice these are captain's chairs, so two individual seats back here. You can also get a bench seat on some trim levels, although most people these days prefer the second row captain's chairs like these. Now, in the calligraphy model, there's a lot of nice upscale touches back here, including heated and cooled rear seats, as you can see in this control panel, so your kids will feel very pampered in the back of a family SUV. You also have a separate climate zone just for the rear passengers back here, which enhances the luxury. And there's a lot more. Storage back here is nice. Little storage pockets on the backs of the front seats, pretty standard, but also little storage nets next to the captain's chairs, perfectly sized for a smartphone, so you can have a place to put it. And on the subject of portable devices, a lot of charge ports back here. You have USB-C ports on the backs of both front seats, easily reachable for rear passengers. That's a pretty cool implementation. You also have a cigarette lighter style port in the center, and next to that, a household style outlet, traditional. You can plug in a power strip and a blender in the back of your Palisade if you want. And you have a built-in rear sunshade, which is nice to see. If you want to keep infants shaded from the sun, you got this. Just clip it into place, and then it's there. You don't have to go buy an aftermarket one that sticks on and then falls off. It's right here from the factory. Also worth mentioning in the second row, it is tremendously easy to get into the third row. You have this button on the side of the second row seat. Just push it, and the seat folds and then moves forward in one motion. No latches, no pulling stuff. Just press the button, and it does it all by itself, and then you can climb into the third row. It's also easy from the third row to get out. You have another one of those buttons on the side of the seat back. Just push it, and then the seat, again, folds and moves forward, and you can climb out very easily. Tremendously good third row access implementation in this car. Also nice to see that you can raise or lower the third row seat automatically from the second row. So you get into the car, you're about to stick a kid into the third row, and you realized you accidentally folded it down. You don't have to go around to the back of the car and fold it back up. Instead, this button on the side, you push that, and then the seat automatically raises itself back up to become a seat again. And of course, you can also lower it from here as well, which adds some nice convenience. Now, as for the third row itself, something particularly special back there. You do have the same upscale leather that you have in the rest of the interior, so they didn't cheap out just for the third row. And you have the heated third row seats, which I mentioned before is a new feature for 23 in the Palisade. A very luxurious touch back there, but otherwise fairly standard third row. You get some USB-C charge ports integrated into the side, which is nice to have. And of course, you also have cup holders back there for three across third row seating. It's pretty good. Not exactly huge, but good for kids, which is basically what most people use it for in these cars anyway. And next up, we move on to the cargo area in the Palisade. Open up the power tailgate, of course, and you can see there's actually a surprisingly large amount of space behind the third row. It's not huge back here, but then this isn't a huge vehicle. It's on the larger side, but decent packaging to have some cargo space back here. And there's even more if you lift up the storage floor. You can see some extra cargo space back here, although it's worth pointing out the floor can't be lifted out or removed in case you have some taller item. It can only kind of come up and stay in place. But if you want more storage back here, very easy to do. Power folding third row, like I already showed you, just push these buttons on the side of the cargo area and the third row folds down. And you don't have to fold the whole thing. As you can see, you can leave one seat up and one side for cargo if that's what you want, which is a nice convenient feature. Now, obviously the power folding seats takes longer than a simple like latch and push method. But the convenience here is that you can fold the seats down one-handed. So if you have something large you're trying to load in the car, you just tap the button with your other hand and then you can get it in, which is a nice touch. Now also nice to see back here a cigarette lighter style outlet for the cargo area. So if you want to plug something in, you're going to a tailgate party in your Palisade, you have power back here, which is a cool feature. One drawback in the cargo area though is the power tailgate button to close it. You don't have a lock button back here. 
meaning that if you close the tailgate with that button, you then still have to get the key fob out and lock the doors, which is disappointing. So many other vehicles with power tailgates have a button that closes the tailgate and locks the car, but that's not the case here. Just a little drawback and inconvenience in the Palisade. And finally, we move under the hood in the Palisade where you can see the engine, and it's the only one that's offered in this car. It's a 3.8 liter V6, makes about 290 horsepower. Now, on most Palisade models, front wheel drive is standard, and you can get all wheel drive as an option. Although it's worth pointing out on the calligraphy, this version, all wheel drive comes standard. Now, like I said, this is indeed the only engine. There's no hybrid, there's no plug-in hybrid, there's no fully electric version. It doesn't have any of that, which might be a surprise, although actually it's pretty standard among midsize SUVs. Most of them haven't yet made the jump to electric or hybrid propulsion. I suspect that will come on next generation versions of the Palisade, the Pilot, the Telluride, all those cars. But for now, just this V6, which is pretty powerful. All right, driving the new Hyundai Palisade. That's of course not quite as exciting as I just made it seem, but there is a lot to like here. And from a driving experience perspective, one of the things to like is the powertrain. In today's world, everyone wants electric or plug-in. Everything seems to be going in that direction, especially for higher end vehicles like this in the 50,000 plus price bracket. But if you're looking for a good, smooth V6, old school, this is that. It's powerful with almost 300 horsepower. It's got a decent acceleration, zero to 60 in the mid six second range for a big SUV like this is great, but it's not just quick. It's also like smooth and it's quiet and it's basically everything you'd want from a powertrain, a V6 powertrain in a midsize SUV. Frankly, it's anything you'd want from a V6 powertrain in a lot of vehicles. And it's nice that it's in a midsize SUV Normally you don't get engines with this many benefits inside a car that you know, nobody cares what engine is in it, but this really is great. There's, there's not a lot of drawbacks about it. Beyond the powertrain, there's a lot of other stuff to like about this car. The driving experience is very smooth in here. Going over bumps and everything, very controlled, but it's not just that. It just feels smooth on the freeway. You, you feel, it feels luxurious. It feels like a luxury vehicle, which is definitely what they're going for here. And honestly, it's kind of, what it really feels like to drive. You have this nice, comfortable interior with nice materials, like I mentioned, but also it's quiet in here. Surprisingly so, you don't have an enormous amount of wind noise or road noise or other car noise. In sport mode, it does hold the gears longer and you can hear more engine noise than I'd expect, but that's if you're in sport mode, you've made that choice. Um, if you go back to regular comfort mode, it just drives normally and it really is nice in this car. And that's especially true with the, $51,000, $53,000, especially Hyundai price bracket. You know, that money gets you into a fairly base model, you know, Lexus RX. And this is just as nice as that. It just doesn't have the brand name, but it does have extra space. Honestly, the truth about this car is it's, it's never going to get you any form of excitement. <laughs> There's none of that here. I mean, like I said, it's a good powertrain and it's quick, but it's not like fast. Like it, you put your foot down, you're still moving a lot of weight, but it, it's good. Um, and that's sort of the general theme of this car. A lot of great stuff here, but nothing exciting. For car enthusiasts watching this video, it's like, ooh, that looks nice. Is it cool? No. It's still a mid-size family SUV with three row seating and a lot of family SUV tech. Power plugs and cup holders are prioritized over throttle response and steering feel. But it is good. Like it's, if you're looking for just a good midsize SUV, this is that. And I gotta say, I've driven all of the midsize SUVs and frankly, I find them all to be pretty good. I like the new Ford Explorer a lot. I like the new Jeep Grand Cherokee a lot. I like the Telluride and the Palisade. It's hard to go wrong in this world. But I will say this car has some little benefits that I think keep it at the very top of this segment and maybe even ahead of all the others. These cars obviously being Hyundais and Kias come with warranties for days, that's their big thing, 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. It is a legitimately a nice feature to have. I think generally speaking, there's just an enormous amount of great stuff here. Um, and it's hard not to put this SUV near the top of your list if you're looking for a sort of traditional, boring midsize family SUV. At least in this case, it's a nice looking car, whereas some midsize family SUVs are just so dull. This one looks good, but don't expect an enormous amount of fun 
Even though it gives you everything you should have from one of these. And so that's the updated 2023 Hyundai Palisade, a great vehicle that's just gotten even greater. The Palisade has basically everything you'd want for family SUV life. It's comfortable, it's roomy inside, it has great technology, it looks good. It's easy to see why this has been so popular. And now it's time to give the 2023 Hyundai Palisade a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 50 out of 100, which places the Palisade here against some midsize SUV rivals like the Toyota Highlander, Nissan Pathfinder, and Subaru Ascent. The Palisade gains a point over its predecessor for improved features, but otherwise things stay roughly the same. And that's a good thing because this car was great when it came out and it's still great.